This video is about configuring the Azure Bastion host service and to provide access to our virtual machines we could give direct public access by associating them with public IP addresses but giving services public IP addresses what are supposed to be private services firstly we are exposing services directly to the internet they could be backend databases with highly sensitive information so we don't want to do that and secondly we would consume quite a lot of public IP addresses depending on how many services we have instead what we can do is introduce a bastion host service this service over here and this service would give us access over RDP and SSH to our virtual machines. And from a traditional data center point of view, it's basically a jump box. And it's been hardened as well to deal with potential attacks from the internet, such as providing DDoS protection. And the Bastion host supports VNet peering as well. So it will not only provide remote access to services within the VNet, but also to VNets that appeared to the VNet as well. So VNet peering. So you could use it for services inside other VNets as well. So let's have a look at how we configure it from the Azure portal. Now I've got my client one on the screen here and I've got a private IP address 10.1.1.7. I could give it a public IP address, but we are going to set up the Azure Bastion host. And the way we usually connect to it is we go to connect over here and we go to Bastion here. Or if we had a public IP address, we could just go to SSH and give it the public IP address and connect to it via SSH or RDP. So if we go to RDP, at the moment the virtual machine is not started so we need to start it up as well so let's start it from here it's successfully started so we can go to connect again and rdp again and it's telling us how to connect so it's telling us to connect over this private ip address but we have no way of connecting to that private ip address we have no connection to it we have no vpn or we have no public ip address as well so what we would do instead is we would set up a bastion host and the first thing we will do is click on use bastion and this is a very quick way of deploying the bastion host deploy bastion it's given us our settings parameters over here but ideally you want to configure it manually so you can see the full settings and you can configure them to your requirements let's click on configure manually and have a look at the settings in here but if we wanted to we can also search for it or we can go on the left hand side menu and go to all services from here and it's in networking here and on the right hand side here we have bastions as well and then we would just click on create bastion now to configure it we do the usual stuff our subscription you specify a subscription my resource group would be my web server hyphen rg resource group for name i will call it bastion host and the region needs to be the same region as what you deployed the virtual network in. Otherwise, you cannot see the virtual network. Let's go back to region and let's specify UK West. Actually, it's South. So UK South. And now we can specify the virtual network, which is my web server hyphen VNet. Going back up to tiers, we have two tiers. So we have the standard tier and the basic tier. Standard gives you a bit more features such as host scaling and a few additional connection options as well. We'll go with basic here. But if we went with standard, we can move the instance count up and down for host scaling. So I can move it right up to 50 here. And it gives us a warning about the Azure Bastion host subnet. It does not have sufficient IP addresses to scale out additional instances. So we will be configuring the subnet next as well, but we're not going to be using this. We're going to be going with the basic, basic tier. Next, we will configure the subnet and the subnet, we can uh, configure a new subnet. So manage subnet configuration. And the Bastion host subnet needs to be deployed with a minimum of a slash 26 prefix subnet. That's 64 IP addresses, minus a few that the Azure system uses. So you cannot use anything smaller like a slash 27. It needs to be a slash 26 or bigger. And they do this so you've got plenty of spare IP addresses for the host scaling feature. So you can add more instances in case your network grows and you need more instances of the Bastion host. And we will click on the plus subnet over here and then give it a name of Bastion host subnet. And then we can leave our subnet as it is. 10.1 let's change it actually let's change it to dot 50 
So this subnet is not within the CIDR space of my virtual network. So we will change this to something much lower like dot eight. And because it's a slash 24, that should be absolutely fine. Let's click on save. Now that we have created the subnet, we can go back to create a bastion over here and then we can specify our subnet now. So click this down and and it's still not happy because the name is wrong. It needs to be Azure Bastion Subnet. So let's do that again. Let's go to Manage Subnet Configuration. And let's click on Plus Subnet again. Let's create a new one. Call Azure Bastion Subnet. And let's change this to a 10, 1, 7, 0, slash 24. And let's click Save. And now we can go to create a bastion again, and hopefully this time it will accept the new subnet. And we can see here it's accepted it. It's automatically appended it in for us. And the last part of creating a bastion host is to add a public IP address. So the bastion host does need a public IP address and you can create a new one or use an existing one. I've already got an existing one, so we will use the existing one here. And then you can just click on review and create. My validation has passed, so I will click on create. And now the deployment is in progress. It should only take a few minutes. The deployment has completed. So let's go to resource and have a look at the Bastion host. So this is the Bastion host resource. We can configure the settings from here, the session, the configuration options, etc. But if we go to my virtual machine again, let's go back to the Microsoft Azure homepage and then go to virtual machines. Let's go to our client one here. We should be able to connect to the client one using the Bastion host now. So let's go to Bastion. So I will put my username and password in here. Then we can connect to my client one by clicking on connect. And there we go, we can see I am connecting to my client one virtual machine and that's it that's all there is to it so we have used the bastion host to connect to my client rather than giving the client a public ip address